Okay. Okay, so um, I will be the second one to change the title of my um, presentation, actually. Uh, I added a S as a, at a studies because uh, actually I'm going to, it's, it's going to be a comparison between two uh, campaigns, two uh, projects uh, studying the, the marine primary and secondary uh, aerosol emissions. So the two different projects are the SAM project, which is French, and the METSI project, which, which is a European project. So the context of the chemical composition of marine aerosol is very well illustrated by this um, very famous figures uh, produced by the by Colin Odar's group, showing the the chemical composition of the aerosol sample at Maysed, Western Island, that everybody knows, uh, during winter and during spring, and you can see that the the, the um, green and yellow color shows the presence of organics. Uh, which is domi dominating the sun micron uh, particle mass, especially during spring when the maximum of uh, phytoplanktonic activities uh, is here illustrated by the chlorophyll A map. As a consequence, the, in global models and also mesoscale models now, uh, the amount of organics in the air, marine aerosol is parametrized as a function of chlorophyll A. Uh, most of the time, well, always measured by satellite. However, um, recent studies found a delay, a time delay between the maximum of the organic in the aerosol and the maximum of chlorophyll A uh, observed by satellite. And moreover, um, such a clear correlation was not uh, really observed in laboratory studies. So we may wonder if chlorophyll A is a good proxy for predicting the organic fraction in the aerosol. So what we did, we, we did within MEDC and SAM was to use mesocosms, which are, you can see a, a picture here. They are large uh, bags that can be up to 15 meters uh, long. And um, we can present large volumes of water that, and, and so we can preserve the biology, bi biological complexity of the seawater in that way. So it's a kind of intermediate between the laboratory story and the in situ uh, measurement. Uh, the, um, the campaigns took place in the Mediterranean Sea here in Corsica. Uh, and the, the Mediterranean Sea is known to be a um, poor chlorophyll AC and highly influenced by uh, anthropogenic uh, activities. So it is in contrast with what we see uh, in, uh, for the Atlantic Ocean. So we follow the biogeochemical composition of the water every day. And at the same time, uh, we wanted to know what were the fluxes to the atmosphere, so we sampled uh, some water every, every day as well and generated the primary aerosol with a bubble bursting experiment. Uh, the size distribution, CCN properties, chemical composition, and biological content of the aerosol was measured, but today I'm just going to talk about the chemical composition. Uh, okay, this is the plot of the chlorophyll A uh, content of the seawater as a function of time during the two different campaigns. They have very different fissures. So during the first project, uh, we deployed three mesocosms. Uh, first, during a period of low chlorophyll A, and second, during a, a period of high chlorophyll A uh, level. So this was a natural bloom in the Mediterranean. And for during the second project, we also deployed three mesocosms, but here we had a control mesocosms. And in the other two, we added some nutrients to artificially uh, provoke a phytoplanktonic bloom and high, higher levels of chlorophyll. So here uh, you can see uh, here the organic fraction that we found in the primary aerosol. It is increased during the higher uh, chlorophyll A level period here, up to a fraction of 64% uh, of, the, of the total mass of aerosol of relatively uh, small sizes from 50 to 60 nanometers here. So there is a we, the resulting correlation that we can have from these two 
uh, periods uh, shown here in red, and they are compared to the existing parametrization that we can find in the literature. This is organic fraction as a function of uh, chlorophyll A. And you can see that it's not too bad uh, even though those correlations were all derived from satellite chlorophyll data and from organic matter sample at the reception uh, site, so in, not in situ. Um, however, we lay on the, in the upper limit of this correlation. And even more, if we look at these two other parametrization that we can find in the literature, one is from the Pacific Ocean uh, sampling, and the other one is from a laboratory experiment. So one explanation for this relatively high organic content might lay in the fact that uh, there is a decrease in the organic fraction at the size of the aerosol increases, so there is a size dependency. But also uh, what we found was that other uh, species were also correlated to the organic fraction, such as the heterotroph bacteria, various lice particles, and also the these transparent exopolymer particles, the TEP in the seawater. So, organics may not originate only from uh, chlorophyll A rich species, but from other components. This was also observed in our second uh, project in which we had uh, enriched the mesocosms, where there is also a kind of correlation between the virus and the heterotroph. However, during the artificial bloom that I am showing here again, we don't see any increase of the organic fraction of the aerosol this time. This is clear. When we uh, plot here on the previous correlation of organic fraction versus chlorophyll, the dots of the enriched mesocosm, artificially enriched mesocosms, they are shifted towards higher uh, chlorophyll A level, but the organic does not increase, the organic content does not increase. However, if we uh, plot here our second um, project, data from the mesocosm, from the control mesocosm that had not been uh, modified, it lays quite well within the existing, the, the, parametrization, the par parametrization that we, we found for both sizes, the ultra-fine size and the PM1 uh, data here. So the conclusion to this is that uh, might be that uh, adding nutrients to um, the seawater alters the natural complexity of the, of the biochemical properties of the seawater, which should be preserved if we want to study the exchanges between the sea and the, uh, and the atmosphere. Uh, this, this is also true, um, this might be also true also for, for our secondary aerosol formation. We also measured the properties of the gas and aerosol which were present in the atmospheric part of the mesocosm in order to see the um, particle, sorry, the particle formation from the gaseous emissions from the mesocosms. And very rapidly, the, what we see is that uh, nucleation occurs within the mesocosm atmosphere while it is not occurring in the uh, ambient Air. We measure cluster concentration, so one to four nanometer particle concentration up to 10 to the 5 per cc. Um, this is um, probably due to the fact that we uh, introduce in the mesocosm an air which is filtered for its particles, so the condensational sink is low. We also see that the, the particle and cluster number concentrations were correlated to uh, the I plus fragments seen in the HR TOF AMS of the particulate phase in the mesocosm. And that uh, the best correlation was uh, between uh, iodine and, um, and the new particle formation was observed in the unchanged mesocosm. So it was not as observed as well in the modified mesocosms. 
So I come to the conclusions, which are just summaries of what I, I said. So we found a clear correlation between the organic fraction in the primary marine aerosol, so not the aerosol uh, measured at the receptor site, but uh, really gener generated by bubble busting, and the in situ chlorophyll A inside the, the seawater, both in ultrafine and the PN1 particles. Other species that uh, other species than chlorophyll A rich uh, species are phytoplankton, might contribute to the organic content of the aerosol. And the biogeochemical complexity of the seawater should be preserved when studying the C2 air exchanges due to the complexity of the biology, which uh, should not be modified too much. A new particle formation occurred when uh, the gas phase marine emissions are imprisoned in the mesocosm and merge pots, which uh, might indicate that open ocean nucleation might occur in the, under favorable uh, conditions. And the um, cluster and particle formation are linked to iodine in the mesocosm. Oh. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Do we have questions for Karim? Questions for Karim? Can't see someone over there? Oh, yeah. Who? I can't see. Um, let me ask a question in the meantime. You, you, you said there were differences between the different kinds of blooms that you produced. And then you, you, you recommend to keep the conditions as natural as possible. But what, what is it that makes the change between the natural and the artificial bloom leading to different particle formation or release? Oh, for the, uh, no, for the particle release. For the particle uh, composition. Well, um, we, we, have, uh, we, do, we don't have an exhaustive uh, idea of uh, the biology there. And uh, we didn't yet uh, identify exactly which uh, species was uh, responsible for the for the organic content of the of the aerosol. So we don't know what uh, why artificially uh, provoking a bloom creates uh, conditions that do not. Uh, um, so that, that, that's work in progress, basically. Uh, yes, bi biology is very complex, and the, I mean the interaction between chemists and biologi bi biologists is uh, language has to be uh, the same. Are there further questions? Yeah, please. So I wonder, yeah, what is the relationship with the uh, particle production and wind speed? Uh, okay, we, we don't have any wind speed uh, in our, it, it's a semi-control uh, experiment. Uh, what I saw in the literature is uh, anti-correlation with wind speed, yes. Low wind speed, high uh, organic content, and low chlorophyll A as well. So there is a interconnection between wind speed, chlorophyll A, and organic matter. Uh, 